So, um, so you, the next the day the album came out, you, I guess you bought it the day it came out too, right? And, oh, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. I was shocked. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Andy Warhol said it, but I have their 15 minutes of fame. Well, I guess mine mm. goes on forever because every time somebody hears that album, they hear that. Yeah. And, and anytime I talk about it, people know that. People know that background voice that said that. Not that I go around. I, I didn't actually know that for years, and you know that it was your or or I knew it back then, and sort of somehow you know I, I forgot or something. What yeah. was the expression we always would use? Paint it black. If somebody was upset or depressed, would say, "Paint it black." Just paint mm. it black. My mother will even say it to me. Paint it black. If you're upset over something, just mm. paint it black. Mm. Stop thinking about it. In other words, you know, yeah. I don't even know what some of the words are in the song. But it just it just means paint it black. Don't worry about it, you know. Yeah. The Beatles would put it how? In some kind of positive way. Um. Yeah, so the, the year you, you were in England and you went trying to meet Mick at, Mick at his place, was that after that or before that? Jeez. When was that? The first time I went to London and I went to Mick's house. That was the first time I seen the Stones, I think. I purposely went to Europe to see the Stones. And I went to Mick's house and I rang the doorbell and a baby came running out. A what? A baby? A baby, yeah. And, and it was Keith Richards' little son, Marlon. He was only about two years old. Um, and so there was an intercom. So I was saying, so did, you per I mean, did you travel purposely to London just to, to see just it? To go, yeah, just yeah. to go to see the Stones because the Stones were on oh, the Oh, the plane. Okay, right. And I couldn't get tickets in England and I didn't know where I could get them. And I knew Mick's address because I used to follow the Stones all the time. I, yeah. knew where, I think it was 23 Shaney Walk. So I went to the house. Well, actually, I hit across the street. I hid across the street in, um, in the trees for a while because I was paranoid and nervous to just walk up onto his porch. But then I finally did it. And again, there's somebody talking on the intercom and it was Anita Pallenberg. And I told her the baby ran out. And she says, please put him back in the house, which I did. And I asked her, why aren't you on tour with the Stones? And she said, because she got sick. She had domain poisoning. And I told her that I had come to Europe because I wanted to see the Stones. And she goes, well, you're not going to be able to get any tickets in England or in Paris. You're going to have to go to Germany. There's tickets available still in Germany. And she told me where to get them in this department store or something. So the next thing I did was take a train to Germany. And... Uh, so, so she was talking to you on, through the intercom? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I wind up in Germany. In this apartment store, I get my tickets. And I don't have any money. I'm only a young kid. And everybody in Germany hated me. The Germans hated Americans. They were, I don't know anything about politics. And they're yelling at me that uh, it's, it's Americans' fault that they have shopping malls and this and that. And I don't know where they were coming from. Um, but I met somebody. Somebody came up to me and said that they think I'm a prostitute because I was in a long black dress and I was sitting wherever I was hanging out at the time, uh, in town or in a park or something. So they think that I was a prostitute. And I says, well, I'm only here to see the stones tomorrow. I have tickets to see the stones. So this guy lets me stay at his house for the night. The guy who thought you were a prostitute? Yeah. <laughs> he didn't bother me. He was very nice. He was a very nice guy. Went to his house. He went to sleep. Um, so the next day I get up and I go right to the stadium where the concert is. And it's all fenced in. It's a big arena and it's fenced in. So I'm there, not very many other people. And in an ad are coming workers that I guess worked with the roadies and whatever who worked with the Stones. And one of them asked me who I was, what I was doing there. I says, well, I've got tickets for the show tonight. So he invited me to come in. So I went in, and I was just watching him set up the stage and everything else. And then he gave me a ticket. He says, you know, you don't have to stay in your seat tonight. You can come backstage. You can go anywhere. This will let you in. You can go anywhere except in the Stones dressing room. 
And of course, I'm in a state of shock. I can't believe this is happening to me. You're by yourself? I'm all by myself, yeah. Mm. Not only am I in Europe by myself, but now I'm in Germany by myself. Nobody speaks English, and that's why this is one of the few people I can speak to. Some of the roadies from the Stones, you know, spoke English, and so they spoke to me. And um, I can't verify this with anybody because they all speak German, whatever. So anyway, at one point, Mick comes in, a truck pulls in, and it was Mick in the truck. He was checking for sound check and just checking to see if everything was all right. I didn't realize it, but after he left, somebody came and told me that Mick was in the truck. And then that night came again, I'm at the front of the line. I had to leave for a while because they were going out to eat or whatever. They were going to get ready for the show at night. And um, I gave my regular ticket when I went into the door and I went to my regular seat, but I had the other ticket with me, the backstage pass. So I'm sitting in my seat and somebody came up to me and said, you have a ticket to come backstage, so come on stage. So, all right, so I did, I went and there I was right on stage. And then of course, I saw the whole show right there. Those pictures I do have in a scrapbook. Oh yeah? They're at my mom's somewhere. You gotta dig them up. I gotta dig them up. Mm. I mean, God knows what kind of camera I had, a little junky little camera I probably Doesn't had. Doesn't matter, as long as you got the pictures. But I was right the there on stage with the Stones, as close as we are now, five feet away from Keith. And then I climbed up on the scaffolding. And um, at one point, Mick is coming up to me and he's doing motions at me. He's doing something, he's, you know, acting crazy and I'm, I didn't know what he wanted. Where were you standing? Yet. Like right off stage or something? Or to the right of the stage. There was a little scaffold with the sound and the lights. You know, the guy had the sound system there, whatever he was doing. It was a scaffold that only went up about two two things high. Mm -hmm. Um and Mick is coming at me, you know, he's dancing, he's doing crazy stuff like that. And he dances away, comes back and he's saying something to me. Finally the guy says to me, Give him the basket and it was a basket of rose petals. So I had a hand on the basket of rose petals. He took them and then he's throwing them out into the audience. I mean, the whole thing is like a dream. Yeah. It's like a dream. I, I can remember it, but it was like a dream. And um, later at the hotel, at some point, Mick wanted to meet me. Really? Yeah. But I couldn't do it. I was too paranoid. I was too scared. Mm, I yeah. mean, this whole thing was like a dream come true. And for Mick to actually be asking for me, and he mm. wants to meet me, I just couldn't do it. Just too much to believe, right? Yeah. Whoa, way too much. I mean, I was mm. there almost three weeks, four weeks. I was on speed the whole time. I was probably awake the whole time. Um, it was too much. It was beyond my comprehension. I was afraid to just go and meet Mick Jagger. Yeah. So I... I, I didn't do it. I had the chance, but I got as close as I wanted to get. So mm. that's it. So that's pretty cool. It was really yeah. cool. Yeah. God. It's almost like a dream come true. It was like a dream come true.